Have you ever thought what the world looks like through the eyes of the wind? Nothing is still. Nothing is at rest. Everyone is blurred and falling away from you, even as they sleep. You know everything, every follicle of hair on every head, but only in surfaces. You know nothing. Do you remember those who have fallen away from you? By the dozens, by the hundreds every hour, or is it all part of the blur? Lighted windows in the night, vignettes of things you'll never know, like eleventh birthdays, or first jobs, or that thing they call a hug. Do you mind it? The constant rushing out of everyone's lives, the knowing and yet not knowing of every single thing, the bottomless hunger to move, the ache of never being moved, never being held. I think you want to be caught. I think you lash out at houses, trees, beaches in a fury of loneliness. Everyone, everyone looks through you. No one, not one, has ever held you. You will whip wild or you will thrash every rock, smash every boat until you find the one who can contain you. I will tell you a secret, my little tropical storm, my seasonal depression, naughty nor'easter. She is already waiting for you. Up Deed's Bluff, past Hinckley's Mill, up away behind the old Cotman's place. You know the one. The old settler's homestead now sunk down into a grassy footprint of itself. There's a girl there. She's a bit rough, doesn't wipe her nose often as people think she should. Mold under her nails. Still wears a dress, though. Her brother's old boots. Some hair. A frown. She's waiting for you by the old chimney, mostly crumbled, but still chimney enough for you to whistle it. She's waiting for you to whistle it, as you do every day, half three, after you've wrangled the cows. But you haven't come. I say she frowns, though that's not quite right. When she concentrates, people think her angry, frowning, like now. She's scowling down the bluff, every hair bristled for your approach. Will you come? She is the one, I say, the one who will catch you. Do you know how? How she will do it? I will tell you, my restless breeze, my uneasy bluster, vagabond wind. You will try to slip up the hill unnoticed. She makes you doubtful, the girl of the chimney, the frown. You don't want to draw her attention. You barely whisper the grass. But she hears you. You tell this by the way her muscles draw in tight as a cat before a pounce. She's listening to you. You more, looking right at you, not through you, at you. You slip forward. So does her gaze, locked onto your wild, windy heart. It rebels, this heart. How dare she, how dare she look at you? You are the tramp of nature, free man of the world, the invisible mover of all things. You will not be caught in her sights, the mouse of her little game. You will charge this bluff. You will raise it with your pounding fists. You are charging, barreling, terrifying. She is tensing, haunches trembling, nearer. Nearer, nearer, about to crash over her, tear her hair by the roots, rip the voice from her throat, and hurl it to Tuscaloosa. But she springs. A cat, uncoiled, throws open her mouth and inhales, sucks, vacuums you in. There is no whistle in the chimney. No whisper, nor roar in the grass. There is no sound save her thrumming heart. And you must listen. Here in the dark, in the damp, thick as caves, you are powerless to sound. How does the world sound to the wind? Always rushing, always raging, always shushing, never silent. No sound but the sound you make. No listening but to your own voice. Until now. Whom, whom. Whom, whom. Whom, whom. Is this what all the world sounds like? Firm and fragile, eternally precarious. You are cradled in the beginning of the world. The air smells like yesterday and tomorrow. You aren't moving. You thought if you stopped moving you would disappear, but you feel your own weight in here. You feel like a body, like gravity, like lead. You have a shape, the shape of her. And you hear the tiny rushings of her capillaries and feel her hand touch her chest, and you know, you know it is a touchment for you. 
She is caressing you, treasuring you inside of her. This thing is called a hug, and you will know it now that you are still enough. Of course it will end. She will have to breathe, and though she will hate to lose you, it cannot be helped so far as I can see. She will gasp and sputter and stumble from faintness. You will whistle the chimney, and then she will blur, fall away from you. You might hear her calling after you, her voice carried on your back. Tomorrow, the voice will say, I'll be waiting. And that, my meandering mistral, my whimpering draught, nervous flutter, that is how you will be caught at last. Her muscles ache from waiting. Go to her. <laughs>